If you were a part of UGS this year, would you just raise your hand? Kid or a uh, worker? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Children, you are dismissed to the kids' power. Thank you, work. Today I continue in the book of James, and I gotta tell you, um, it feels like you get get the head of the two by four this morning. I don't apologize because we've all sinned and fallen short of God. James talks about temptation, so if the shoe fits, wear it, okay, folks? Because I've got to wear it for the fifteen. And so uh, James. One, begin with verse 13. It says this. In the American Standard Version. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away in Christ by his own lust. Then when lust is conceived, he gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth Death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brother. Every good thing given, and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Now, many of those who are here this week, I think they might have been a little bit tired this morning. What do you think? Or yesterday? And all of us in life, even after we've been on the mountaintop, Sometimes we can drop our guard. And the devil comes in and he tries to club us. He tries to tempt us. And he tries to take us out. And so it might be a good reminder this season of the year for us to remember that there is an enemy. That we are tempted. 113 again says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. Anybody out there think God has ever tempted you? Uh, maybe you felt like it. I, I know a pastor. He had a couple come into him for counseling, premarital counseling. And they told the pastor, uh, the man told the pastor, Oh, my wife was hard to live with. And, uh, but the Lord brought my neighbor into my life and now we want to get married uh, no we're not divorced yet uh, but God God has arranged this and I kept my mouth closed but I want to save you we may have some great excuses we may have some sad stories to but if we fall into sin, if we get things out of order and fall into sin, don't say, oh, this is God's will. Don't blame me, the Lord's saying. I'm not the one that's tempting you. It says, for God cannot be tempted by evil. God can't be tempted by evil. Isn't that good? God can't be tempted to do no. He, he loves us. And he's not going to tempt us to do evil. You know, uh, there's a saying, I know my son shared it with me before. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. You may have heard that before. You give somebody power, and they're corrupted, and Boy, you're going to have a mess on your hands. And we look at our government, we look at those in authority, we say, oh, somebody's got power, and they're going to end up corrupted. <coughs> our God cannot be corrupted. He is forever holy. His word is forever true. And you may say, wait a minute. Wasn't Jesus God with us? Wasn't he tempted in the wilderness for those 40 days? 
In fact, the, the scripture does say that. That he was led into the wilderness by the, by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. But you see, Jesus was fully God and fully man. Remember, he was out in the boat in the storm on the sea with his disciples and he was sleeping in the bow. Fully human. He was tired. Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? But he was fully God. And he arose. And he rebuked the wind and he said to the still, hush be still, and became perfectly calm. He was fully God and fully man. He warned his disciples, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is one, but the flesh is weak. And Jesus said, after his resurrection, see my hands, my feet, that is I myself Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, ye behold, that ye behold me having. Jesus was a man, born of the Spirit, born by a virgin. John 1.14 says, And the Word became flesh, the Word that created the Logos, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. Glory is the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 3, 34 says, The one whom God sent, his son, speaks the words of God because God gives him the Spirit fully. And so, yes, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit, but it was the devil who tempted him. In Hebrews, it says that he was tempted in all things like we are. Yet without sin. And he, God, does not tempt anyone, the scripture says. Jesus told us in John chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Thieves only come only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus doesn't want us to experience death in our lives, the consequences of sin, and that must, is not just death at the end of the road. Many of us have experienced different types of death, the death of relationships, the death of a job, the death of a ministry, the death of a dream, because of choices we have made when it comes to temptation. How many of you have seen those insurance commercials uh, where the one in insurance guy pops up and he calls his name and he fixes everything and the other person's insurance guy pops up and you call their name and they've got this fishing pole and they dangle a one dollar bill in front, you know, they don't want one dollar bill and then when they get ready to reach it, they pull back the pole. The devil may to do that, but our Heavenly Father doesn't. He's not out to see us fail. He wants his blessings to be upon us. It's the devil who seeks to devour. Tempted. You don't say when you are tempted. <laughs> we need them to understand this word. Tempted to try to test one's faith, their virtue, their character, by enticing to sin. And we are tested often when we're tempted. How strong is our faith? How strong is our love for God? How strong is our love for those around us? <clears throat> but to be tempted, to solicit the sin. <clears throat> Jesus was the only one who the Father led out into the wilderness to be tempted, to be tested. So the man would know that he's the Son of God because the Scripture says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He doesn't lead us forth. He doesn't need to lead us forth for that temptation to, to show us off because he knows we have weakness within us. And Jesus came through clean. 
Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things, as we are yet without sin. What does it mean to sympathize? Do you, do you ever sympathize with people with what they're going through? Have you been through something similar, similar to empathizing with them? Jesus knows how hard it is to resist temptation. Remember? In the garden, before his crucifixion? Oh man, I could call on 10,000 legions or thousand legions of angels, Father, and, and I could be out of this place. That's a tempting thought. I, I could take the day off. Now, I'm tempted this week. Let's see, if I don't preach this morning, i got to stand in every morning, uh, every Sunday morning. Stephen would be preaching this morning. Tempting. Tempting. But no, I'm feeling good, praise the Lord. And so I'm preaching. But we all get tempted. But Jesus sympathizes with our temptations. Remember the prayer of the Lord's Prayer? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's for all of us. All of us who have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We need Him not to lead us into it. We need Him to deliver us from it. Verse 14 says that each one is tempted, and that's to do evil. When he is carried away, to be carried means to draw out, to lure forth. Any of hunters out there? Fishermen out there? Ever try to lure forth? To draw forth? I know none of us men have ever tried to lure. <laughs> someone of the opposite sex into a relationship. Shame us on us if we have or if we do. May we repent. But the language of the hunting. Anybody have fake geese? I went to an estate sale in the garage of this man where all these fake geese you know what you use those fake geese for, right? Put them out on the pond, put them out on the lake, put them out on the river. Build a little shelter. And when the real geese are lured in, boom! That's what Satan desires to do with us, to lure us in. That we may experience death in our lives. Now, there's some good things that we might be lured into. Uh, movie theaters, you smell the popcorn aroma? Well, maybe that's not good, I don't know. Lured, tempted, enticed by his own lust. This says, the problem isn't with God tempting us. The problem is with our own <coughs> lustful heart, our own fleshly hearts. <coughs> We respond to the allurement. Perhaps you've heard the story of the Alaskan wolf hunters. They would take a large bladed knife. They would put blood on the knife. They would freeze it. And they would coat it in more layers. And they would go out and they would put it in the ice. And the wolf, having the sense for the blood, the desire for it would go out and slowly come near the knife, seeing if anybody was waiting, anybody prowling or anything, begin to lick the blood on the knife and enjoy it. It was so enticing. The wolf would realize when it would cut its own tongue and continue to suck on the knife until it was dead. The devil desires to allure us, to entice us, that we would partake in that which will kill us. Sometimes in our allurement, in our enticement, we think, oh, we have willpower. We can withstand this temptation. That might work for what I hear Arby's has to offer. 
had fun at the wedding last night around the table talking about some of the things that were uh, tempting the people. I understand they have some type of patience, not garbage. Now, I'm not trying to sell you on that. <laughs> but uh, willpower might be enough to withstand that, right? But the enticements we have within us, the weaknesses we have, the propensity for sin that we have within us, we have to be careful we don't get in a tug of war with sin. We need to be discerning. What is the will of God? Sometimes we're not even sure. Let's see, is this right or is this wrong? Well, this will take a, a couple of us back a few years. Some of you might remember the words to this song. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's the artist? Okay, that's good. That's all right. If being right means being without you, I'd rather live a wrong doing life. Your mom and daddy say it's a shame, it's a downright disgrace. As long as I got you by my side, I don't care what your people say. Your friends tell you there's no future in loving a married man. If I can't see you when I want to, I'll see you when I can. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Am I wrong to fall so deeply in love with you, knowing I got a wife and two little children depending on me too? Am I wrong to hunger? With the gentleness of your touch, knowing I got somebody else at home who needs me just as much. And are you wrong to fall in love with a married man? And am I wrong trying to hold on to the best thing I've ever had? <clears throat> if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Are you wrong to give your love to a married man? And am I wrong trying to hold on to the best thing I've ever had? If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. I don't want to be right if it means sleeping alone at night. I don't want to be right if it means coming home at night. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to never, never, never be right. Has this person been enticed? Has this person been lured? Will this person taste death? Will those around me taste death? Will those around her taste death? Rod Stewart. An icon of morality in our society, right? Not back in the day, folks. If it was lewd, crude, rude, sinful behavior, he is epitomized it. And this was his song. Jesus said, The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our own lustful flesh. Let's take account. Don't say when you're tempted, you're tempted by God. God is not tempted by evil. But we are carried away by our own lusts. Let's take responsibility for our actions, for our desires. Are you being tempted? Am I being tempted? Are we near the knife that's stuck in the ice, that's ready to cut our tongue? Do we want to drown in our own blood? I'm not here to throw stones. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But I do say, let's, make, let's not make God an accomplice for doing evil. Not, let's not downplay our condition. And our responsibility. Be careful. When a man thinks he stands, yes, he fall, lest he fall. Be careful when we think we're so strong. We have so much self-control that we can go into any situation, that we can be a part of anything, and we can be strong enough. A man who I respected immensely, a little bit older than me, had to speak for me before when I was a youth pastor to our youth in Walla Walla and uh, on the other side of the mountains for rallies. He ministered to street people with a huge heart. 
One time he even gathered up some money from some friends of his, went downtown, went to a place of uh, ill repute, and gave money to a person there so he could speak to a young woman as they sat out on the curb together and he shared Christ with her. He went on later to enter the ministry and has had a great street ministry, ministering to the poor and those who others would have considered worthless. But the day came, and I don't think all in one day, and he was enticed. Now, before this, he had married the preacher's daughter. But he was enticed, and somehow he fell into sin. It ended his marriage. It ended his ministry. It ended a lot of things. And I don't know how that man is doing today. But don't think we are so strong that it can't happen to us that it can't happen to me, that it can't happen to you. Let's keep our guard up. Because when sin is conceived, it brings forth death. Romans 3.23 What is it? Come on, folks. Romans 3.23 For all of sin, all of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 What's that one? Amen. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Even while we were his enemies, God showed his love to us that he sent his only son to die for us. That one who was sinless, that one who was tempted in all things as we are, yet did not sin, the one who can sympathize with our weaknesses. He's the one that the Father sent. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever would believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus became the sacrifice for our sins. Because of our fleshly desires and our decisions that bring death. So how do we respond? Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Turn our hearts back to God. Receive His forgiveness that He paid for us on the cross. Confess our sins to Him. For if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to bless us of all unrighteousness. And confess our sins to one another. And James later on will be talking about this. Confess your sins to one another and be healed. They were coming out to Jesus to be baptized in the Jordan River and they were confessing their sins. It's not because they had the air of their dirty laundry. It's so they could be set free. Jesus says, said, abide in me and let my word abide in you, and you will produce much fruit. Abide. Stay close to him. Don't drop your guard. The living word, the spirit of God that comes into us when we receive Christ, when we turn to him in faith. The written word. I'll tell you what, if I was having a tight war with the devil. Ooh, I think I need that piece of dessert. Ooh, no, no. Oh, I'm getting pulled back, yo. I think I dropped the rope because you don't win a tug war against the devil. Not on your own strength. And I pick up the word. And I fight the scripture. No temptations overtake you, but that which is common to man. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you, but you, well, you can withstand. But with the temptation will provide a way out that you may stand up under it. Claim that word. Let go of that rope. You've got to shift gears. You can't hold on to a rope with the temptation on one end and you on the other because uh, you need power. Rebuke the devil. 
flee from youthful lusts. Don't think you've got all it takes. Call a friend. Call a brother or a sister. And confess, I'm weak right now. It gives us strength. Receive him. Receive his word. And pray. Jesus said, pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Pray daily. Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We realize that sin is crouching at our door. And we must master it by the power of Christ and his word. Or we will experience death before the end even comes. And friends, the scripture does say, bad company corrupts good morals. And we may have to be careful about who we're running with. We may have to change gears there too. Because we can be led astray by the influence of others. There was a <coughs> man sitting behind me last night and uh, he had had a drink. And I think it was his son who says, uh, Oh, we'll have another one. We're going to order another one. He says, No, I'm cutting myself off. And the son responds with something like, Oh, well, our family isn't a bunch of quitters. A lot of help the son was, right? Well, dad stood to his guns. Praise the Lord, right? But that company can corrupt good morals. Careful, we don't allure one another to sin, amen? Uh, I'm part of one of the men's groups that are meeting here at the church. Joe's leading another one. And there's a little discussion about temptation because that's one of the things we're looking at. Now, I don't want to throw it all on you, so don't please hear me. But ladies, it helps us men when you dress modestly. Understand? When a man walks up, you have to do this. Uh, that's good. But that was a comment from our men's group. You know, the scripture talks about dressing modestly. Now, is it your fault if somebody sins? No, but we want to lure one another into sin. And women, okay, the floor is open. What men do? They can tempt a woman to sin. I'm not talking about any specific kind of thing. What do men need to be careful of? Flirting. Pardon? Flirting. Flirting. Okay. Flirting. Anything else? Lust. Pardon? Lust. Lust? Okay. So, men need to keep ourselves bright there. Alright? I mean, it might be a temptation to our wives uh, to uh, get upset with us. <laughs> Men, if we're being lazy, we might tempt them to get a little bit angry, right? Our children, if we're too harsh, it might tempt them to rebel. So it's not just in one particular area. If we're judgmental, tempt others to rebel as well, and different temptations. But may we do our part not to be a temptation to someone else, to allure someone else. May we not gossip, be condemned. Jesus came that we might have life, may we not blame him for enticing us into sin. In 2 Peter, and I'll close with this, Chapter 2, probably through verse 19, says, For you are a slave to whatever controls you. And when people escape from the wicked ways of the world by learning about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and then get tangled up with sin and become a slave again, they are worse off than before. It would be better if they had never known the right way to live than to know it and then reject the holy commandments that were given to them. 
to make these proverbs come true, a dog returns to his vomit, and a washed pig returns to the mud. John 3, 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. If we are a child of God, may we abide in Him. May we continue to walk in His spirit, knowing that He sympathizes with us, that His blood is available to us, and if we sin again, it's available, but the consequences of sin, especially when we know better, don't necessarily disappear. They linger. And they make life difficult. And death serves. Let's stand. The worship has come forward. Church, just because we come to the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't mean we're not tempted. Matter of fact, when Jesus, after he was baptized, declared who he was, went out in the wilderness, did the devil to do his best to clean his clock. And so if we're tempted, may we not be too proud to say, I'm struggling here. Help. And may we not be so proud to say, oh, I can go anywhere. I can do anything. And I'm strong enough to handle it. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, we don't like the case of death. It's really sick.